Okay, I think we'll get going here. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining. My name is Josh Taylor. I'm the manager of business development overseeing the agri-food sector with the London Economic Development Corporation. Uh, our job with the LADC is to help support the sector um, and ensure um, suitable access to talent. This morning, we are happy to present this webinar in partnership with Food and Beverage Ontario to present their new Careers Now program, a great resource to help you uh, with attracting and retaining talent. Today's agenda, we're going to start off with a presentation by my colleague, Christine Wilton, Director of Workforce Development. She will go over the LEDC's uh, support systems in place to uh, help support talent in the sector. After that, we'll hear from Jason Crawford, Director of Membership and Industry Liaison with Food and Beverage Ontario to talk about the Careers Now program and why it's a great resource. Following that, uh, we'll open the floor for questions. So feel free to put any questions you have in the chat um, and we'll get to them at the very end. And just a reminder, today's presentation is being recorded. So you'll have this resource available to you after. Um, this will be sent in a uh, cloud uh, link. So with that, I will turn things over to Christine to start things off. Thanks so much, Josh. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name's Christine, as Josh said, and I am the Director of Workforce Development here at the LEDC. I wanted to take this opportunity to um, either introduce you or reintroduce you to um, some of the supports that we provide to you from a workforce development perspective at the LEDC. So, let's get going. Um, just a high level, uh, the LEDC is the lead economic development agency uh, in London. We work with businesses, government, education institutions, and other industry partners to ensure that businesses can continue to grow with us here in London, and we also attract new businesses to the city. So my work here in workforce development in focuses on ensuring that we have the talent pool in the region to, to make sure we can meet the needs of the jobs that we have available today and in the future. And I'm just going to... Okay, so when we talk about workforce development supports here, um, you know, our uh, goal here at the LEDC is to make sure that we're building long-term relationships with you uh, with ongoing supports so that you can continue to grow with us here in London. So we do share a lot of information um, related to market conditions. Um, we can help you with wage rates, uh, recruitment, um, and connecting to resources. So this example with Jason here is an example of a resource that we're connecting with. It's a really great program for you to take advantage of. Um, and we really want to help also amplify your efforts in uh, recruitment. Um, so please feel free to reach out to us um, if you have any questions. So I want to talk a little bit about our services that we have to attract local talent. Um, if you are not aware, the LEDC runs three free job portals, uh, London Manufacturing Jobs, London Health Jobs, and London Tech Jobs. So you are able to post your positions on our portals and they automatically upload to both Western and Fanshawe's career sites. So this saves you a lot of time and administration. And not only does it um, amplify your recruitment efforts by getting all the students' eyes on your positions, it also helps um, connect with alumni at those institutions. And Western has about 400 alumni and Fanshawe has about 200. So if you're not using them, get in touch with us today and we'll make sure that uh, you have an account ready to help um, begin posting. Uh, we are very connected in with both Fanshawe and Western through the LEDC and can make sure you get connected in with career supports at those institutions to access the talent pool. We're so fortunate here in London to be home to two world-renowned uh, world educational uh, institutions. And um, if you have not participated, we do run the largest in-person regional job fair in in the region. Um, we do that twice a year in person in September and 
in April. So our next one is scheduled for April 23rd in 2024. It's going to be here in no time, guys. So uh, you want to start thinking about that. And um, we had for the September, we had over 2000 job seekers sign up to attend that event. So it's a really great resource for accessing local talent. For those of you that don't know, um, the region has an integrated employment services network uh, consisting of about 24 government funded agencies who who really work to ensure that people who are looking for jobs are connected with jobs so we can help connect you into that network. And I wanted to mention a bit about the recent employment prospect reports that we just released here at the LEDC. Um, we worked with Mike Moffitt from the Smart Prosperity Unit and have some um, prospects uh, highlighted in advanced manufacturing, which you would be most interested in, uh, construction, technology, and health. And they're really good resources for you to look at what is um, happening in your sector. And I wanted to share just a brief clip. Um, this is one page and from the report. They're quite long. They have been, though, vetted by employers in the region. Um, so there's some really good recommendations. But what I wanted to point out on this slide here is if you look, it's kind of hard to see, but the third... Um, line there is laborers in the food and, and beverage industry. So we are predicting um, about 750 openings in that sector over the next eight years. So the blue is due to expansion and that green bar is actually due to retirements. Um, and the red is due to other, so either people changing sectors or, you know, moving cities. So this is a really um, interesting thing for you to get your, um, you know, attention on. And if you're interested in understanding more about uh, what these types of projections mean for your uh, businesses, I would be happy to set up some time to chat with you um, about some of the things that, that we can do to help with recruiting. I also wanted to highlight, um, we can also help you access international talent. The LEDC is the only agency between Windsor and Waterloo um, that can make referrals to the federal government so that you can get a dedicated contact in immigration, refugees, and citizenship Canada. We can also make referrals on your behalf to the global talent stream. Um, this program would help you hire somebody from outside of the country uh, for a uh, innovative mission critical position, but we can help with that. And if you're ever bringing in international talent, we have a lot of supports at the LEDC that are available to you um, to help welcome and help connect people with resources. I also wanted to highlight, we're really keeping our eye on um, places outside of London to attract talent. We have a really great campaign um, running in Toronto right now called Don't Tell Toronto. And this is a, a fun and cheeky campaign that talks about the quality of life that we have here in London that we might, uh, people in Toronto might not be uh, experiencing, but pretty much, local, you know, our cost of living, our space, you can have a dog, you can have a barbecue. Um, we have another campaign running in the US called um, Choose London, and this is running in 19 states, and it's geared towards the choice and diversity and inclusion that we experience here in London, um, particularly what they might be ex not experiencing in the US. Um, so we get hundreds of um, inquiries a day related to these campaigns where we make sure that that each person gets an individual response, um, connecting them into uh, specific positions that we have on those job boards that I mentioned earlier. So um, it's really um, helpful. You get a lot more bang for your buck when you're posting on our job boards because um, we're amplifying and sharing those out when we're presenting, when we're at our own job fairs or at the school. So it's a really good resource for you.
And lastly, I just wanted to make sure you all had my email uh, and my LinkedIn. If you want to scan that, you can connect with me easily. Uh, I am happy to um, go over any of this information with you and um, in more detail and understand better what your, your staffing needs are for your organization. And that is it from me, just a high level overview. I'm going to stop sharing and let Jason jump in. Thanks so much, Christine. So as Christine mentioned, feel free to reach out for any questions or additional support on a local level. Uh, now we'll turn things over to our uh, longtime partner, Food and Beverage Ontario, uh, Jason, and talk about the Careers Now program. Go right ahead, Jason. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, Christine. Um, just going to make sure my screen comes up. Can everybody see my screen okay, Josh? So um, good morning, all. As uh, Josh uh, mentioned, my name is Jason Crawford. I'm the Director of Membership and Industry Relations at Food and Beverage Ontario. Um, thank you for taking the time out of your busy day to uh, to join this webinar. Um, I know how valuable your time is, especially on the HR side. Uh, also, thanks to Josh and Christine and the LEDC for their partnership for uh, not only putting this together, but we've been longtime partners with LEDC going back to 2013, I believe, um, where we did some work with uh, with London. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with uh, Food and Beverage Ontario, we are a not-for-profit uh, uh, organization that um, dedicated to advancing the interests of our Ontario's food and beverage processing sector. Our focus is on the prosperity and growth of the food and beverage processing network. We work collaboratively with our colleagues and partners across the agriculture and the food supply chain. As Christine mentioned, that was a great slide, Christine, that you showed on labor. Um, that that resonates with what we've our own research has found. Uh, retirement is a huge uh, issue within our sector right now. I believe the average worker of a of a line worker in a plant is something like fifty four years old. It, it's 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 scary. Um, our number one focus, and I'll get into this in a minute, but our number one focus at Food and Beverage Ontario is on labor. Uh, the chair of our board, you know, has, has made it clear that we have to be, you know, one of those solutions that helps fill that gap. And we're doing it in a number of different ways. We see labor as being not just about bringing people in, but automation and, and, uh, attracting more people to the sector. So, um, we, uh, we project, and I'll get into this a little bit more later, by 2025 through Food Processing Skills Canada's, their, their research, the sector is going to be short 25,000 jobs by 2025. So it's it, it's become an issue that is it's critical to our sector. It's critical to being able to provide food for you know the Canadian market. Uh, I think we all experienced during COVID, and I know you all you know shared in the pain as well, but going to the grocery store and not being able to find what you need you know, that was because we didn't have the labor. That was, that, that's, so that's, it's a scary situation that we don't have enough people to fill, uh, to fill labor. So my goal for this webinar is to share with you not only the benefits of our Careers Now program, which is a free program, and it's a program that doesn't compete with what, you know, Christine uh, talked about. We think it's, it's a nice compliment to what Christine is and, and London are doing. Ours is specifically focused on food and beverage and we believe that the more spots you can have your jobs posted, the more success you're going to have. So again, we see it as a compliment to what London's doing and, and credit to London for what they're doing, because I said they are, we deal with a lot of municipalities and they are doing a lot of great work. Um, so, but we also want to show what this, this is a great tool for your HR toolkit. It's, a, it's just another, it's a, another thing you can do to attract uh, uh, people to your company. And we're also, the program is also about sharing the stories of our sector. You know, the, one of the things that we found through our research is that, you know, millennials, uh, um, Gen Z, is it, is it Gen Z that I'm, uh, am I pronouncing it right? Sorry. Um, my my grandkids are American, so they're always reminding me it's Zed. Um, you know, so one of the things is, is, is that value in their job. And value in the job is not just pay, but it's also they're, they're making a difference. So our stories are talking about those differences because it is a feel-good industry. So following this presentation, I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. And again, if you have questions direct that you would like to ask me offline, I'm happy to, to set up a call and, and go through that. Josh is going to share my information with everybody. So just what is Careers Now? Uh, Careers Now is, a, is Food and Beverage Ontario's flagship workforce development initiative that is connecting students, job seekers, and employers in Ontario's food and beverage sector. This is, again, this is uh, truly dedicated to the food and beverage sector in, in Ontario. 
And again, the idea about attracting more workers into the sector. Careers Now was designed and developed with project partners and our advisory council, which I'll, I'll share in a minute. It's been funded by a skills development, the skills development fund, a provincial fund since 2020, with just over 5 million to date, which carries through to April 2024. And we've applied for funding for 2024 through 2025. Career is now is fully in field and operational with an established and expert delivery team. Career is now is being widely recognized as Ontario's food and beverage processing industry's comprehensive work development program. And again, a compliment to what London's doing. So just to give you an example, when we created this program, we brought in a group of people who are our advisory council members. And again, from this list, you can just see, and uh, we're adding London onto this list as well. Uh, we have got a mix of processors, uh, schools, uh, municipalities, and uh, even service providers as well. So the Careers Now, again, is part of the Food and Beverage Ontario. It lives off of our, of our site. Uh, and again, I've got into what we what we do, but again, our our goal is is the success and prosperity of of the food and beverage uh, sector. Labor is one of those components that makes is going to make us more successful. So, just some of the uh, and again, uh, Christine probably talked about a few of these as well. Uh, again, we've got up to twenty five thousand jobs available by twenty twenty five. Food and beverage is the number one manufacturing sector in the province. Um, over the years, uh, our message to the provincial government has been how important this sector is. We feed Canadians, but also we have, say, it's the largest manufacturing, manufacturing sector by employees. And again, the province is definitely paying more attention to it. Uh, and again, so we've got 125,000 people employed. So on the... Um, uh, where Careers Now fits in. Careers Now was built on the Food and Beverage Ontario's legacy uh, program. Some of you may have heard of Taste Your Future before. This is built on that. Taste Your Future was really talking to students. Uh, Careers Now has really expanded to talk to new Canadians, students, and those looking for uh, a career change. Since its inception in 2020, Careers Now has been developed as a central resource hub for employers, job seekers, and students to learn more about careers and connect for employment opportunities. We we position this as not just it's not just a job but it's a career. Uh, I can't tell you the number of people I've talked to who are in roles of vice presidents, presidents, directors who started out on the plant floor. So that's the story that we're trying to get out. Some of our project partners that you'll recognize here: EMC, uh, Food and Health Consumer Products Canada, uh, Ontario Chamber of Commerce, Onika, Niagara College, Meat and Poultry Ontario, Food Processing Skills Canada. University of Guelph and Ivy, uh, Careers in Food. These are some of our project partners who are helping us deliver the program as well. So just to give you some, a lot of people will say, well, why should I be involved in the program? And again, this is a free program. You do not have to be a member of Food and Beverage Ontario. You do not have to just be, a, it's, this is not just for, for London, but again, it's a free program available to all Ontario food and beverage processors. So the program in 2022 to, to March, 2023, we had over 2000 uh, job seekers and employers participated. We had 541 um, users of, of our platform, of our job platform. We had 241 um, job-ready skills training for learners, so people who had signed up for our courses through Food Processing Skills Canada. We had 1,324 job fair seekers. Right now, we're averaging between 120 to 140 job seekers per job fair. Uh, we had 54 companies um, involved in our uh, job fairs. And the big thing is, is we we found uh, 641 people jobs in, in our sector. So we also did some survey. And again, uh, we've got some information that I'm going to share with uh, Christine and Josh as well that talks about um, everything from, from new Canadians to um, uh, retirement uh, to students um, that, that works, in, that, that aligns with what Christine had presented. But we, everybody who participated, every job seeker that participated in the program last year, we interviewed them. 58% of them that came to our site were unemployed. 34% identified as a racialized group. 45% were the ages of 25 and 34. 63% were women and 3% were Indigenous. And again, the, um, sorry, just missed that. 16% uh, were the ages of 15 to 24. So careers now, what do we do? What is the program at, at heart? So this slide here just really shows what's, what's available to both job seekers and students. On the left-hand side, what we provide to job seekers and students. Again, this is all free for job seekers. Job-ready skills training through F, 
Food Processing Skills Canada. We have a career advancement coach, which I'll, I'll get into in, in a minute. We have virtual job fairs, uh, which uh, are, are, are simple for job seekers to, to get into. We have the Careers Now Job Seeker portal. We have uh, work integrated learning for college and university students that they can be a part of. We have live live stream of mentorship events, and we have Taste Your Future resources that help build a career. From the employer side, to talking to this group, is we have the Careers Now Employer Portal, which I'll show you in a minute. We have virtual job fairs. Uh, we're doing uh, one a month, um, and again, very simple to uh, to be a part of. We have a mentorship series that we're we're off also offering for employers, and we're talking about subjects that matter to employers today. And we have a number of employer resources um, that would help you again your HR team. So the biggest, or the, the number one thing is we have the posted job. And the posted job is, is built through uh, the Magnet Portal, which is developed through uh, Toronto Metropolitan University. This portal um, really, uh, it, it's connected to not only the job seekers that we pull in from our website, but it's also connected to um, uh, uh, all of the colleges and universities across Canada who post jobs. So similar to what Christine was talking about with, with Western and, and Fanshawe, this system goes out to, I believe it's 43 schools across the, across the country and it posts on their job boards as well. It's a pretty simple uh, system to use once you get logged in. Um, and again, anybody who's interested in a demo, I'm happy to set up something offline. So some of the stats from the platform that we can share with you is that we have op we have 130,000 job seekers in the system that we have that employers have access to. So when they post a job, there's 130,000 people who potentially have the opportunity to, to see those jobs. Of that, 45,000 have a preference for entry-level jobs, 1,450 have a preference for skilled trades, 8,000 have a preference for manufacturing, warehousing, and material handling, and 12,700 have a preference for uh, the food services. So again, it's a great base to get involved. It's a great base to start with. It's not like we're just asking, we're, we don't have people to, to, I guess, market to is the best way. Uh, but again, it is a great base for you to, to start looking. Uh, again, hire young talent. Um, uh, businesses with careers now, of course, can post jobs for college or university students looking for work integrated learning placements. And again, there are funds available up to $7,000 per semester. And again, for more details, I'm, I'm happy to provide those, those for you. Uh, for a job seeker, I just wanted to show you the side that, that a, a job seeker would see. Like the job, the employer portal is the same thing, uh, and a job seeker would fill in the port, would fill in the, their information. And again, they would tick off what they're looking for as far as a job. And again, that's how we would match up the, with our, our postings. Job fairs, we have job fairs that have happened, uh, are happening again December 12th. We've got one January 9th, 9th and the 30th, February 7th and 13th, and the 6th and 12th. We can accommodate up to 30 companies in those uh, job fairs. Um, you can post up to three jobs per job fair. This is all free. Uh, it's a pretty simple system to use. We've got a team of people through um, uh, food grads who will help get you set up. So basically you send us your logo, the, the job, the company, or the, sorry, the job descriptions you're, you're looking to fill and we match up people who are looking for a job. So you basically show up to your virtual room and you interview uh, people as they come in. And just on the right-hand side are just an example of some of the companies that have participated in that job fair. So just some job fair insights that we pulled out through, again, through some of our sur survey. 19% of job seekers are, attend from outside of Canada. This talks to what Christine was saying about connecting with uh, uh, those potential new Canadians that are coming in. And again, 88% of those said they were willing to re relocate to uh, Ontario. Uh, each job fair is also attended by the Brampton Multicultural Community Centre to assist job seekers if they have questions about becoming a Canadian citizen. And again, it's almost a 50-50 split on whether or not job seekers have their own transportation. And again, that's another issue that we found in the, in the, uh, uh, in the sector with just getting people to work. Majority of job seekers, 50% said they had some experience working in food and beverage, 27% said lots, and 23% had no experience. To solve that, again, we've we partnered with Food and Proce Food Processing Skills Canada to again to offer courses, and I'll show you a few in a minute. On average, two hundred job seekers attend each job fair, and ten employers had a booth. We also have an advancement coach, and this is where I was talking about uh, earlier, is that we've uh, brought on um, Leonard Zappia, who's with the uh, with EMC, and what he does is he'll work with uh, job seekers about helping them, you know, through their interview process, the resume. He'll also work with employers as well for to give them support as well. So anybody who's interested in, in getting in touch with with Len, happy to pass on that contact info. 
Uh, the job ready skills training that I, I mentioned, this is offered through Food Processing Skills Canada. And this is really anybody who would like an intro to Food Processing Skills Canada. They're a, an unbelievable organization that do a lot of work in our sector. Happy to make an introduction, but they offer a, a number of uh, skills training courses. And again, just a few of them. Again, and you can see from this list that it's pretty basic up to, you know, uh, I wouldn't say advanced, but again, for people who want to advance in the in, in the sector, there are a number of courses that they can do, all offered online. So what are we doing for engagement? And again, I'll, I'll go through these slides pretty quickly, but one of the things that we recognized is that as much as I could get, if I can get 500 employers onto this portal, that's great. But if we don't have the job seekers looking, what do we, you know, that, that, that that's a bit of a waste of time from the employer side. So what we've done is for the first time ever, the ministry has allowed us to do out of home advertising. So in London, in early in the new year, you're going to see some billboards again with our, and, and I'll get to that in a second. But again, what we've done is we've committed to attracting job seekers to our sector. So are we stealing, trying to steal people from other sectors? Absolutely. And again, it's, it's, it's not that we're, we're offering, we're trying to show us our great careers that, that are in the food and beverage sector. So uh, just some quick um, things that we found out through our research. Um, market research, research was conducted in the summer of the fall. Here are the key takeaways. Endless possibilities for careers within this industry that are purpose-driven. Again, getting back to my point that we, we're feeding Canada. Uh, growth potential. Again, it's a career that grows with you. Uh, connection to a variety of positions and career routes. And access to professional development skills training is, is a big thing within our sector. They're the careers that are fast-paced, challenging, and interesting, and have a diversity of daily tasks. Again, what story, what job seekers are looking for, they're looking for that work-like life balance. So back to Christine's point about moving to London, ties in nicely with what, what you're promoting as well, job security and mentorship and growth development. So our campaign goals are we're trying to engage 15,500 people, drive 3,000 email registrations, and ensure 1,920 people secure a job. So our job is to really fill positions for you through this, this um, through this program and through this campaign. Excuse me. Um, and again, so we, we're doing that through digital advertising, uh, paid views on, on the website, and again, some out-of-home uh, uh, paid media advertising. Um, so the campaign will run for six months for, beginning in October. It started a little late, so it's going to go a little longer. And again, it's divided into two campaigns, awareness and conversion. And again, London will start, and I'm sorry, I don't have a slide on London, but London will start early in the new year. Digital advertising, we've got a lot of digital advertising. Again, we're talking to job seekers. It's not just about, again, posting a job. We're trying to engage them through social media and through, um, through their devices. So just to give you, an, I just I hope you can hear this, but this is just an example of some of the social, uh, some of the ads we're we're doing, and of course it's. Did you hear that? Okay, Josh. Uh, no audio, but the vi the visual is good. Okay. So I'll, I'll send along a link to the video so everybody can see it, but it, it, again, there's no talking, it's just, it's just music, but anyway, so that's some campaign creative. And again, we've, we've geared it towards those who, who are, are the target audience for, for jobs within our sector. Whoops. Uh, again, you're going to see just an examples and you'll see these billboards in London in early the new year. Um, and again, we've tried to emphasize the from passion to profession. So it's what people love to do. And, and, and it's again, as I tell my kids, and I think you all do do what you love and this is this is the the message we're trying to get across. So hopefully you see these early in uh, in uh, January. A lot of post secondary engagement as well. We believe that you know the uh, those students coming out of university and college are uh, critical to to the to to help the sector. Um, our next uh, the next year we we go with uh, careers now in twenty twenty four. We'll also be focusing on high school as well. Just some, and again, just an example, some post-secondary engagement. We're trying to get uh, students involved in some of our virtual sessions. And again, our social media, we've been pretty active. So really, that's it, uh, Josh. Uh, again, thank you, everybody, for the time. Um, I appreciate you taking the time. And, and if anybody wants to contact me after this, I'm more than happy to, to chat with you. Thanks so much, Jason. Um, as Jason mentioned, another just great resource to utilize. 
um, just to help with your recruitment efforts. Um, <clears throat> this is, again, completely free, similar to the services LEVC. Uh, we're all just here to help make sure that uh, you um, can staff appropriately and you can retain your talent appropriately. Um, Jason, I guess just a quick question for you. And one last thing, feel, feel free to put anything else in the chat. If anyone has any questions they want to ask to Jason, or we can connect you offline if that's what you prefer. Uh, Jason, if, if, um, anyone on this webinar sees careers now and says, yep, I want to be a part of this. I want to definitely uh, engage with this. What's, what's step number one? Um, is it to have a conversation with you? Is it to go through the website? Uh, what do you suggest? Uh, one or both, uh, Josh, they can contact me and I can help them get them set up on the, on the portal. Um, but if you go to careersnow.ca, uh, you will see that it's, it's pretty easy. You click on, uh, on, uh, employer and again, it'll walk you through, but yeah, I think the, the, the easiest thing is to, is to contact myself and I can walk you through it, but, but it, it, it's pretty simple. Perfect. Great to know. So looks like I don't think we have any questions. So I'm guessing you guys both did a great job at uh, presenting the information. Um, as we mentioned, you know we'll, we'll share contact information for both Christine and Jason if you have any follow-up questions you'd like to, to ask. And you will receive a copy of this recorded presentation. So thank you so much for uh, joining us this morning. Um, as we mentioned, we're here to help support you. So feel free to reach out um, and hope to see you again in the future for uh, other presentations that we offer. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, Christine.